Hello, I'm Professor Afshar at Glendale Community College. This is Physics 101, Lecture 26. In this lecture, we'll discuss Hooke's Law. This topic is covered in Chapter 7 of our textbook by Survey and Jouette. Our goal in this lecture is to understand the following question. Suppose you have a horizontal table, and on this table we have placed a block. The block is attached to a spring. More precisely, one end of the spring is fixed and attached to a wall, whereas the other end of the spring is attached to the block. Now imagine that you grab the block and you pull the block to the right by a few centimeters. The question we want to answer is what is the force that the spring exerts on the mass or the block? The first person to systematically address this question was Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke was a contemporary of Isaac Newton. In fact, Newton and Hooke were bitter rivals. Robert Hooke found that the force that a spring exerts on a mass attached to it is given by this formula. So the spring force is equal to minus kx i hat. This important equation is known as Hooke's law. Uh, k in this equation is referred to as the spring constant. It characterizes the spring's stiffness. So if you have a very strong, stiff spring, then its k-value will be a large number. But if it's a wimpy, thin spring, then its k-value is going to be a small number. x measures how much the spring is stretched or compressed. More precisely, for this scenario using a standard coordinate system, if we pull the block to the right, stretching the spring, then x is going to be a positive number. But if we push the block to the left, compressing the spring, then x is going to be um, a negative number. i hat, of course, is just a vector that points along the x-axis. It's telling us that the spring force is acting along the x-direction. It could be pointing in the positive x or the negative x-direction, depending on whether the spring is stretched or compressed. Notice that there is a minus sign cooked into the equation. It is a part of Hooke's law. The minus sign is basically telling us that this spring is doing the opposite of what we're doing to it. So if we're pulling the block to the right, the spring is going to be pulling to the left. If we are pushing the block to the left, the spring is going to be pushing to the right. Uh, in other words, if we stretch the spring, the spring is going to want to be unstretched. If we compress the spring, it's going to want to be uncompressed. So the minus sign is basically telling us that the spring is doing the opposite of what we're doing to the block. I should mention that this force uh, equation is written for a horizontal spring. Here we're imagining that the spring is aligned with the x-axis. Later, later in the course we'll be discussing vertical springs, and in that case you have to modify this equation. You will replace x with y, and i hat gets replaced with j hat, but the central mathematical structure of the equation is the same. I should also mention that um, here we're talking about springs, uh, but our interest uh, goes beyond the springs. It turns out Hooke's law can be used to uh, describe the behavior of many elastic things. For example, a rubber band may not look like a spring, but it turns out its behavior when it is stretched can also be described by a similar equation. In fact, chemists often describe the bonding between atoms inside a molecule using a very similar equation. So when atoms bond together, that bond can be described using Hooke's law. If the bond is a very strong bond, like a covalent bond, then we would say that the spring constant is a large number. If the bond is a weak bond, like uh, an ionic bond, for example, then we can say that the spring constant is a small number. So understanding Hooke's law uh, is quite important for us, not just because we want to understand springs, but because we can apply it to many other situations. To better understand Hooke's law, let's examine the forces that act on the block when it is attached to a spring. To begin with, let's consider the case where the spring is at its natural length. 
that means that the spring is not stretched and it is not compressed. In that case, x in Hooke's law is going to be zero. Remember, x is not the length of the spring, but rather how much the length of the spring has changed compared to its natural length. If x is zero, then the spring force in the x direction is also zero. Remember that according to Hooke's law, the spring force is minus kx. And so if x is zero, if x is zero, then the spring force is zero. And thus, the only two forces that are acting on the block are gravity, or weight, pulling straight down, and the normal force pushing up. The normal force and weight balance each other out, and the spring force is zero. Here's a slightly more interesting case. In this case, we have actually stretched the spring, so we have pulled the block to the right. In this case, x is positive. When x is positive, the x component of the spring force is going to be negative. Remember, there is a minus sign built into Hooke's law. According to Hooke's law, the spring force is minus kx. When x is positive, the force is going to be negative. What that means is that the spring force is going to be pointing to the left in the negative x direction. So in addition to the normal force and weight, we now have a spring force pointing in the negative x direction. If we compress the spring by pushing the block to the left, then x becomes a negative number. We're using a standard xy coordinate system. We have displaced the block to the left, so we have made the spring shorter compared to its natural length. In that case, we would say x is negative when we place a negative x value into Hooke's law, we find that the spring force in the x direction is positive. So in this case, the spring force is pointing to the right or in the positive x direction. Let's do a practice problem that involves both Hooke's law and the concept of work. Consider a block of mass m attached to a horizontal spring on a frictionless table. This is exactly the scenario we've been considering. Suppose the block is initially at rest at distance zero from equilibrium, which basically means that initially the spring is not stretched and it is not compressed either. Calculate the minimum work necessary to displace the block to distance x from equilibrium without imparting a final velocity to it. Before you do any calculations, note a couple of important facts about this problem. First of all, we want to calculate the work done by you, not by the spring. So imagine that you're trying to grab the block and pull it to the right, let's say, so that you want to stretch the spring, thereby displacing the block by distance x. And as you are pulling on the block, the spring is also pulling on the block, but in the opposite direction. So there are these two opposing forces, your force and the spring force. Each one of these forces is doing a certain amount of work Right now, we're not interested in the work done by the spring force. We're, done, we're interested in the work done by you or the person that is trying to displace the block. Furthermore, we're interested in the minimum work that should be done. In other words, we want to apply the absolute minimum force to achieve this work. We don't want to overexert uh, over ourselves. Now, it's not obvious what the minimum force should be, but if you think about it, you'll see that as you pull the block, the spring is going to pull back. And so to achieve any kind of a displacement, your force must be um, greater than or equal to the spring force, right? If you want to have any hope of overcoming the spring force and moving the block, your force must be greater than or equal to the spring force since we're interested in the minimum work necessary and the minimum force, we're going to say that your force is equal to the spring force. So with that in mind, we can now calculate work as follows. Work is the integral of force times distance. Here we're imagining that we're uh, moving the block in one dimension, so we don't really need the more sophisticated dot product definition. The motion is in the x direction, so the integration is going to be in the x direction. 
the spring force is minus kx, your force is plus kx. Remember, we're interested in calculating the work done by you, not the spring. And integrating kx should be relatively simple. k is a constant, you bring it out. The integral of x is simply x squared over 2. You plug in the limits of integration and you find that the minimum work necessary to stretch a spring or to displace a block attached to a spring is one half kx squared. Remember this result. This result turns out to be a very important result. We're going to see it later when we discuss energy, uh, in particular potential energy. But for now, just think of it as the minimum work necessary to move a block that is attached to a spring. And that's the end of this lecture. Thank you for your attention.